What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another week here on Finding Direction. And this week on the episode, we're having a, I guess I'm just going to call it a special guest. And that special guest is a good friend of mine with the name of Nick Lovano. And Nick Lovano, you'll hear more about this as we dive into the episode. Uh, But Nick was someone that I went to college with. We built a business together for several years, traveled, Um, literally all over the world building businesses together. And nowadays, he's doing many different things in his life, but he's still doing it extraordinarily successfully. Now, Nick Lovano, to give you a little bit about him, he is the founder of a seven-figure real estate company. He's now building his second seven-figure real estate company. He's also a owner and a CEO, a founder of a real estate education company. He's a serial entrepreneur. um, And as I like to call it, he's a professional at having fun in life. If you follow Nick on social media, see what he's up to. uh, He has a beautiful balance of working his face off with also enjoying life to the fullest extent. And so on this week's episode, it was really fun. We actually shot this one in person. So you can check it out on YouTube and see the full in-person edit. It was really cool to do one in person. It's been a while since we've done that. Uh, But on this episode, we talk about a lot of different things. We talk about how did Nick go from having a six-figure income to all of a sudden waking up the next day with literally zero dollars in income, and how did he go about building it back? And not just building it back, but even building it further and greater and doing more. We also talk about how do you find the vehicle, the right vehicle that can help you get to your dreams. We talk about how can you build a clear vision for your life. And we talk about many, many other things as well. So this one, my friends, again, truly a joy. Uh, Nick's a good buddy of mine. It was uh, a really, really fun conversation, fun to do it in person. And so if you have not yet, before we dive into the episode, please make sure you subscribe so we can get this out to you regularly every single week. And if you haven't yet, please go to the iTunes store, leave us a review, leave us a rating. That is how we spread the message and the impact of everything we're doing here on the podcast. So other than that, my friends, we are going to dive right in and here we go. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Nick Cavana. Welcome to the podcast, man. Good, good to be here. Good to be here. For real. It's nice to be in the flesh too. It's been uh it's been a minute. Uh very long time. Very long time. For, for real. For sure, for sure. For real, man. So to kick this thing off, let's give the listeners kind of an idea of like what did life look like for little Nick? Like growing up, back way back. Well, um, first of all, I come from like a very traditional household. So for everybody who's watching, um, go to high school, get good grades, go to college, get better grades, and then go just go get a job. <laughs> and that's like a funny story, which we'll probably talk about. Mama Lovano. Yeah, which we'll, we'll talk about, um, I'm sure, you know, sometime today. But um, just, just taught that throughout my entire life. That's the only way to become massively successful. And um, end up going to San Diego State. That's how, yeah. that's how we met. For which sure. Is a, which, was, which is another story in itself. Yeah. Too many stories. A lot uh, of stories. Yeah, from that. But, uh, and, um, you know, and then wound up, you know, getting ready to graduate. Didn't know what I was going to do. Um, getting ready to get a degree. Didn't know what I was going to do with the, with the degree. Right. And then um, randomly got introduced to the industry. And maybe you By can. By some you, dude, some yeah, punk. Yeah. So for everybody who's watching, um, always got to give a shout out to this guy right here. <laughs> um, number one is always accept invitations. I think that was the worst at that. I was just like, I'm not going. I'm not doing. I don't want to hear about it. Very stubborn, stubborn. thick-headed. Yeah, and and very young and naive. That I knew everything about everything, realizing I knew nothing about nothing. Yeah. So if you're out there, you're 20. I was probably what 22, 23 ish. Yeah. Yeah, you were a little bit older, so it was almost like, like I could see it from your perspective, where you're like, I'm here. I'm around these. You know, I mean, we're all kids at the point, but you're like, I'm around these kids that are a little bit younger, and they're bringing this idea to me, like. Looking back on it, I guess I can make a little bit more sense now of you being like, I mean, you were still thick-headed as very, shit. Very thick-headed. Very. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, we were college roommates. Yes, yeah. And I, so this, this is going to be very, like, different. I'm probably maybe from 
you know, uh, yeah. people you talk because we actually live together. Yeah, we got some history. Yeah, I've got some. I've got some very crazy yeah. stories. But um, got you know, got invited to attend like a business meeting, which I didn't know was a business meeting. Yeah, got introduced to a concept. Um, and I'll throw the industry out there: the network marketing yeah. industry, which I'll always be an advocate for. Network yeah. marketing industry. And um, the quick question for you in that: Do you think part of the reason? Um, and I never thought about it this way, but do you think part of the reason you were so against it almost was because in the back of your head, there was the programming from your mom saying, you go to school, you get a, you get a job, that's how you become successful. And all of a sudden here's this, you know, friend, you know, that maybe you knew for like a year and, and clearly did not have the most credibility in your eyes because you were partying all the time. Uh, what, like, was it playing in the back of your head that he goes, well, nah, you know, my mom, my dad said that. Like clearly, this isn't the way, and I think that that's uh, was probably the biggest um, hurdle that I had to overcome is just going from a traditional household, seeing my dad work a job yeah. and very successful. You know, yeah. worked a job, my mom worked a job, very successful, yeah. um, many many years. Just recently retired, just like follow the, the plan, on. right? Yeah. Um, and then you get introduced to a concept of like, hey, be your own boss, work your own hours, and it's a one hundred percent commission performance driven business. Um, and so for me, it was really hard to accept like, Hey, this guy's 26 or 25 making <laughs> yeah. X amount of dollars, yeah. right? 50, a hundred grand, 200, 300,000 a month. And they don't have a nine to five. So I think that that was the biggest hurdle for me to overcome. Um, and, and then plus you were 19. Yeah. You were 19. Me. He's 19. I was 22, 23. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just, it was a, there was a gap for sure. Yeah. And I think like something from that too, that I think anybody listening to this can get is the, the concept that like you you have to have an open mind in life and if you go through life saying no i got it all figured out this is the way that it's going to be an opportunity may come through to you but because you don't have an open mind like you're going to miss that you know what i mean like you have to be you have to it's almost like if you look at um what is it like i think it's lawyers that when you're in or like a debate class you have to learn how to debate your side but you also have to learn how to debate the other side and be so convincing on both sides because then you see the different perspectives. And it's like, if you're so set in one track, you may be missing out on an opportunity that could- Potentially change your life. Change your life. And, and for me and for everybody who's watching, you know, if I did not get involved at 23 years old in uh, that industry of network market, I would never be where I'm at today. And if I didn't take a, take a chance, take a shot, and really just take a risk, it was almost a risk, it was literally a it was risk. A risk. Um, I think I think I look at it like a calculated risk. Yeah, because you didn't drop out of school. I didn't drop out. I didn't <laughs> drop out. I was like, yeah, more calculated. I was like doing the business, working, doing meetings and sales and traveling right. while you know finishing my last semester and a half right. or so of college. It was so, good timing. Yeah, perfect timing. Yeah. And then you know you get to the point where it's like, I think where I was at, where I said, hey, look, I had seen so many people graduate prior to to me and to us, you know, throughout the, the you know the years. Yeah. And their yeah. working jobs didn't require degrees. They were uh, working like at that time, this is back in 2013, 14, working nine, 10, 12 bucks an hour. Yeah. Scary, scary For times. Sure. And then student loan debt. Luckily I didn't have much, but seeing people graduate 30, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollars in debt and just know nothing guaranteed after. So yeah, I feel like sometimes you got to shoot your shot. Yeah. Yeah. And just so, say, screw it, go yeah. jump in and, you never know what can happen. So let's say we jump back then to, you know, part of my memory of Nick Levon as we go through college is one, obviously having a phenomenal time, partying, doing the good stuff. Good, good time. <laughs> good time. Life, life is short. Life you got to enjoy the moments. I think, uh, especially but looking back on 2000 and was it 20, yeah. right? The, the, the pandemic. I mean, yeah. and everything, all the craziness, you just, life is, you just never know. You know, well, always have a good time. Yes. Yeah. So, so still living that philosophy. And so in college, you're living a good time. And a memory I have is like, we would, you know, party, you'd wake up the next day and you go like tutor people and you were a communications major. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, I, I guess what I'm wondering is like, when you went into college, did you have an idea of like, I'm going to come out, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to come out. I'm going to like communications is such a large Broad. Broad, yeah. So it's like, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do with your life? No idea. Okay. No idea. I just knew, hey, look, um, as long as I'm in school, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm technically like on track to hopefully, you know, become successful. Right. And again, today, uh, I, I believe 
two things very they're very strong. Number one is still an advocate for education, right? Yeah. Still yeah. a big advocate for education. I want my future kids to go to college. That's good to hear. Okay? But number two, do I believe that that's the only way to become successful? Absolutely not. Not. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, I hope that whenever that day comes and I have kids, they can make that decision for themselves. But I had no idea what I was going to do. But I knew that um, San Diego State at the time was like the number, I don't know, three or four party school in the country. <laughs> yeah. And I said, look, if I'm going to, you know, you know, get a degree, I might as well be down in San Diego. Having a good time. Having a good time while pursuing my education. Yeah. But no idea. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, what does Jim Rohn say? He says, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you wealthy. Something along those lines. Yeah. Or a fortune, right? So it's like you do have to complement the two, you know? Yeah. And I think for so many people, they, and I think I could say this is probably true for how you continue to live your life is it's like people graduate and they turn off their education. They turn off their education. Nobody reads a book. Nobody improves oh, themselves. Yeah. It's like you got to, you got to, even as you're past the schooling and the learning phase of your life, you always have to work harder on yourself than you do on your business, your work, your career. Like yeah. you are your greatest project you'll ever work on. And I think that's what the, that industry taught me, you know, mm -hmm. the network marketing industry was, you know, is just personal development. It, you know, that's when we started going to seminars, yeah. you know, um, the Tony Robbins seminars, yeah, right? Yeah. Going to, you know, workshop and, and, and reading books and listening to audios and the Jim Romes and, the, you know, just all these, these, these people that we never heard those names or knew to do that, <laughs> yeah. right? In, in like, college. It was like, hey, there's a textbook. Stuff? There's a lecture, there's a PowerPoint, there's a test, there's maybe an essay or two, and then you get a grade, right. A, B, C, D, whatever, right? Yeah. So I think that that industry, that's why I, I believe it was the best thing that I could have ever done is because it taught me at a very, I think I was still pretty early age, 23, yeah. it, you know, taught me those philosophies and to continue to grow and develop. And then ultimately it grew, which I believe is the most important thing to, uh, you know, to me is just the ability to communicate and sell. Mm. I think if you can communicate and you um, know how to sell, you can, you know, you'll be wealthy forever. I really yeah. believe that. I love that. Yeah, very sure. true. Uh -huh. So, so then no idea what you're going to do. Um, eventually your 19 year old roommate pulls up with a BMW. Yeah. You're like, yeah. all right, shit, this thing works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was going through your head at that moment? I'm oh. curious. When was the moment for you that you were like, shit, I need to actually like open my mind a little more. So two things. Number one is I was going to graduate in like seven months, six yeah, months. Yeah. So I said, you know, am I going to go from this like rock star fraternity, great, fun life to like being in a box for eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, three, you know, yeah. that's the first thing that was like frightening. I'm like, how do you go from there to there? Right. Um, and then the second thing is the shiny object, right? <laughs> I was at the time driving a 2003 Ford Mustang. Yeah, yeah. It's like the thing was breaking down. It was like, you know, I had souped it up in like high school and it was just wasn't a thing. It was just tough. It was a it's tough a, drive. It was a little bit of a beater. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was just, and then he shows up in like the shiny new Beamer. We had like navigation at the time. Yeah. It's like 2013. Bells, so, whistles. Yeah, the bells, the whistles. The music works really loud and he's like zooming in, taking pictures and I'm just like sitting there. I'm like, all right, Okay, that's all. I, that, that's really all I needed to see, and that, and I'm gonna tell you why that yeah. goes a long way. Yeah, in any industry. Yeah, you know, at, at, there comes a point in time where you, where I think results speak so loud, people can't really hear what you say. Thanks. Right. And although it was at the time, you know, we were young, so a shiny BMW is like the world to us. Right now, it's just like okay, it's another car, but right. it's the world to us. Yeah. It's like wow. So for me, that was results, and they that you driving that car spoke so loud. That I didn't need to hear what you. I didn't need to hear you out anymore. Yeah. I said, okay, show me. It works. What you're doing? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, cool. So let's say we fast forward a little bit. Obviously, you and I do business for four years in this yeah. network marketing company we're yeah. in. We're able to, you know, I mean, honestly, like travel the world, oh, help a lot yeah. of people, learn principles that, like, I mean, I know for me and probably speaking for you, change your life. Yep. Um, it was like the most incredible foundation you could ever get to going on and doing business later. And I'm curious for you to save the long story of all the things that happened in the four years. And you know I mean? We could be here for four hours talking about that. I'm curious, like, as you look back on that moment today, and I know you touched on this just a little bit, 
But what would you say are like two principles you took from that that helped you build in the direction that you're going today? Um, I think it was definitely, um, and I, I touched upon them earlier, it was the art of communication and the art of sales hmm. and personal development. And I think that for me, uh, we did well in that industry. Very well. We did very well. I think if you look at the numbers, we were probably top one or two percent in like yeah. easily in that in that industry yeah. easily, and so I saw that you know I was I was felt so blessed and fortunate to number one meet mentors like people that had been there and done that, right, um, and that can show you the way right results people with proven results, a uh, proven track record that were teaching us how to duplicate what they've already done, yeah, and then number two, um, I was like hey look there's this incredible skill set that we were able to learn. Um, sales, communication, public speaking, and just management. We were managing almost hundreds and thousands yeah. of people at one point. And so I said, what can I, how can I apply these skills, which I've acquired over the past four years, um, and get and, and grow and get bigger and big, more results, more yeah. results. And that's yeah. why, that's how I, you know, stumbled into real estate. Yeah. Okay. So perfect transition. So, you know, obviously, Four years into this endeavor, one day the big bad day comes and basically both when I, both you and I get phone calls and are like, hey, this thing you're doing where you're, you know, basically have uh, like thousands of people you're leading and you've like shared with them, like there's this dream, you really can't live this. All of a sudden yeah. one day you get a phone call that says, hey, you got to tell all these people that you've, um, for lack of a better term, like sold this dream to that it's come to a close. Yep. And yeah. I'm curious, what went through your mind the moment you realized, okay, this chapter is coming to an end? Because for me, at least, that was one of the most like deep places I, I went into in my life was like, okay, I'm doing something I love. Like they say, you never work a day in your life if you love what you do to all of a sudden waking up one day going like, what, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? I had this thing that was like so enriching in every aspect. Yeah now I got to find the next thing that's going to do that. So like what was going through your mind in that sense? Um, I think, and I want everyone to understand this and, and I'm just going to say it the way it was. Yeah. Um, you wake up one morning, you get a phone call and there's no, there's no longer a company. So in, what that means is your income went from there to absolutely yeah. zero. So if you're out there today and you lost a job, you know, maybe due to the pandemic, maybe you're in a transition mode, maybe you just graduated and don't have a job just yet, whatever it may be, understand that I guarantee you, anybody that was massively successful faced adversity. Right and up. I think that for you, for me, we are still pretty young, still pretty young today, but just that was the major adversity because we had cars, we had rents, we had bills, we had this, we had that. And one morning, zero. And so that I think that you just have to, I took a look in the mirror and I said, there's only two directions you can go. You can sit, you can cry, you can moan, you can, you know. Yeah, yeah you can, or, pity. or you can, you know, you can go out there and you can just build it back up. You can go over there and like really just, you know, um, you know, just go all in again. Yeah. And I think, um, I think the only challenging part in that was just finding that next vehicle. Yeah. Because I think that going all in, like we were used to doing that already. Yeah. But it was just like, hey, are we going to go all in in another network marketing business right. in a different industry like that was i think the challenging part yeah and that did happen for a little bit right for a little it was like all right there's this other company the company yeah and we went there and i think probably for both you and i it was a matter of like okay this isn't hitting the same way uh, yeah passion was yeah this isn't tapping into the yeah. same vein like get me going the same way so at what point did you go after searching kind of how did you stumble into real estate being the next vehicle um that's a that's a great question. I, I I remember the day and I'll never forget yeah. it. Um, I was at a, at a I was at a guy's house. I got invited through like a friend of a friend huh. to a guy's house in Beverly Hills, um, Mulholland Estates, and the guy was worth. I mean, I had heard, I googled it, yeah. like fifty plus million or just some some number. And I'm going to his house and I'm looking around and I'm looking at the pool. <laughs> and I'm looking yeah. at just the private. I'll just just extravagant, just incredible beautiful home and i said is what i'm doing today like this industry i was still in that that right. business gonna get me to where i want to be and that was where i wanted to be yeah. and i said what can possibly get me there and so i i said 
I don't think so. I really just didn't believe it. I said, you know, yeah. for some people, I think any industry works. The insurance, the network marketing, the real estate, the whatever, e-commerce, everything works. But I just yeah. felt like for me personally, it wasn't that industry anymore. Mm. So I was just searching. I said, what is out there? And um, I think when that light bulb goes off, I think it's, it's um, one of those times where it's like, hey, you go into like grind. I remember I was on YouTube. I was like networking. I was calling people. Huh. And I just saw an infomercial. That's the honest truth. I saw an infomercial um, about real estate investing on YouTube. Really? Yep. Saw an infomercial. And um, I, I was like, a, it was an infomercial. And it was like pitching to like <laughs> come to this like free web class webinar. Really? And like it was, I think webinars were still kind of new at that time. Yeah. It was like 2014. No one had like, it was, right. now they're like everywhere. Everyone, yeah. yeah. But um, I signed up. And I sat, I remember I signed up. I sat there. I took, I mean, I was just like taking screenshots and writing notes and just like, really? and like there was like a case study of a guy who made like 25 grand yeah. on one deal with no cash, no credit. And that's, that's exactly all that I needed to hear. I said, 25 grand, no cash, no credit. There was another one for like 70 grand, right. no cash, no credit. I said, you know. The dots were connected. Yeah. The you light went, bulb went off. This can get me to that. That's crazy. I never got <laughs> in, an infomercial an YouTube. Infomercial. So thank you, YouTube. And um, I'll even, I've, I've even talked to the guy who was in the infomercial. It was uh, really, it was Josh Altman, million dollar listing. Huh. He was like, he's like a big time real estate agent in Beverly Hills, yeah. one of the biggest. But at the time he was doing like, you know, a course on like in real estate investing, not the traditional like agent, yeah. but it was like real estate investing. And I don't think he even has the course anymore. It was like in 2014 or I'm sorry, 2016, something. So, yeah. um, but it was an infomercial. That's crazy. Yep. That is, the I start, never knew that. The start, real. the start to the Flip King. Yeah. yeah. So, so the seed's planted now, right? You go, okay, dots are connected. This thing can get me to that dream of the $50 million house. Not that that was per se the exact dream you wanted, but it was the direction you knew you wanted to go. So what is your step one, two, three look like? Do you just start doing the things he says to do in the webinar? Do you just start executing on that? Um, no, no. I would. I, I'd be well. The first thing that happened was number one. I, I became very obsessive about this about real estate, learning real estate. I went to go buy some books. I watched every single YouTube video, nice. and I realized um, I need to make some phone calls. I looked at my phone, and I and I there was like about five people that I knew that were actively doing real estate, or I thought were doing real estate. I called them all. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, you know, have you heard of this? Have you heard? I'm just networking, 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 yeah. networking. And, um, you know, one of the guys, um, was a buddy of mine who was doing it, but wasn't like really big, wasn't yeah. really successful just yet. He was just like kind of on his way. Getting into it. Yeah. And so I said, I said, Hey, what are you doing, uh, tonight? Like nothing. I said, let's go to dinner. I'll buy you, I'll buy you dinner tonight. Meet me at dinner tonight. Nice. And he blew me off. And then I was like, no, no, let's just go tonight. And then, you know, uh, we went to dinner and you know, I was just like, a, I was just asking all these questions and just, you know, I became obsessive. Yeah. I became obsessed with that industry. Uh, and I think that when you become obsessed with something and it's just in your mind 24-7, uh, I mean, it's almost inevitable, like you're going to make it happen. Yeah. That obsession, that passion never leaves. And that's why I think that's what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think an important lesson for anybody that's listening to this is trying to figure out like what they want to do with their life is it's like if you find something that hits that spot in your heart don't just dabble around in it like truly if you want to figure out is this the thing and am i going to get really good at it you have to become obsessive over it and i'm curious like you know obviously obsessive is a like a, a pulling word kind of there's two mm -hmm. opposite sides some people go obsession it's a horrible thing you know it's blah 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 and then on one side obsession is one of the best things you could ever do to become successful. Yeah. Um, like I know, for example, when we did the business together, it's like we ate, oh, breathed, yeah. slept this thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess I'd be curious for you, like let's say someone has an idea of something they want to do. What are a few ways that they can become obsessed with the craft that they're trying to study and learn and get good at? But I think, you know, and everyone's idea of rich and wealthy is completely different, yeah. right? Completely different. You know, one is just this house in Beverly Hills and one could be like, hey, I want to go build houses in Mexico, right? And that's my idea of rich and wealthy. And the other person is, hey, I want to have this big mansion. So number one is like, figure out what it is you want. Mm. And then number two, figure out 
the vehicle or the industry that can get you what it is that you want that you want. And then last but not least, just find an expert. I think finding an expert. And yeah. I get so many people that reach out to me now uh, for real estate coaching and mentorship and guidance on in that in that realm. Right. And I always the first question I ask them, and it's so crazy because they're all from like social media or YouTube. They never ask me my credibility. They're never like, hey, how many deals have you done? How long you been in the business? This and that. Um, because I always like, you know, post, you know, credibility. Like it's just like they right. already know who I am. Yeah. Their their question is like, how does it work? What is the program? Cost, whatever it may be. I think it's just finding an expert because when I was able to get around people that were just killing it in, in early on in my real estate career, um, and I, and I went to and I brought on some mentorship, some personal mentorship. Went to a couple of seminars yeah. of just like, but the people that I chose to invest into as far as their programs and coaching, they were legit. Yeah, they were legit. I knew they were legit. It wasn't fluff. It wasn't BS. And they were like legit. And I think that's what really propelled um, my real estate business in the beginning to like. Net that, making that first million yeah. before it was like hey we're doing well we're doing well but then it was like yeah you find you, you find an expert and a mentor yeah that literally cut the learning curve that's when like boom it was like a couple i don't know six months nine months boom that million hit so yeah. I think yeah. that's what it is figure I, out what you want um industry or vehicle, or vehicle. and then mentorship yeah. yeah and i think there's something powerful too about like when you pay you pay attention you know what i mean so like if you say what do i want what's the vehicle Another question that comes into play is like, well, how bad do you really want those things or that life yeah. or this, this vision that you have for yourself? Um, because I think sometimes people go, yeah, I want to like too many people think, I think say, I want this type of a life or I want to create this thing, but they're not, they don't really want it. You know what I mean? It's like you're, you say you want it, but when it comes to putting in the work, the hustle, the sweat equity, you're not willing to do that. And I think one way is you even look at like exports and mentors is it's like, a test of that, if you want to shorten the learning curve, is when you find a mentor, like, are you willing to invest in yourself and pay for learning, shorten your learning curve? Like someone once told me, and I thought this was genius, people either spend time to save money or they spend money to save time. I, yeah. 100%. And it's like, you, if, if you really want it that bad, you got to spend the money to save the time. And there's something that happens inside of you when you invest a, a solid chunk of money where you go, holy shit, like I just invested X amount of thousands of dollars. Like if they say do this thing, I'm going to do this. Or if I don't want to do that, well, I paid to, I paid them to tell me to do this. So like I'm going to do the thing. So um, there's a real sense of creating that shortcut. And so there's one thing that I'm curious to ask you about. And it's like, you know, if you, I'm going to throw the Bible in here for a sec, but it's like, if you go look in the Bible, it says where there's no vision, the people will perish. And I think one of almost like a, I don't know if I'd call it a superpower that you have, but you have a very strong ability to cast a vision and then become laser focused and work your ass off, do whatever it takes, like just go. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious, like kind of a two part question is one, what do you believe is the power of like having a vision? And then two, how do you go about building your visions? So, um, I think that, and it goes back to like that, 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 I think I had said it a little bit earlier. It's just, um, you know, that same mentor that I had met and I saw his house and this and that. Yeah. Uh, he was getting ready to have kids. And this guy's worth now, he's, I think he's worth 400 million now, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Um, but I remember he's getting ready to have kids. And I'm talking to him. I say, hey, you're so successful. And we're having a conversation just like this. And I'm trying to just like, he's my mentor. And I'm like, just trying to ask him questions. He's open. He's like, you're yeah. in real estate at this point. Yeah, I'm in real estate. Okay. And I'm asking him, I say, hey, you're so massively successful. Like you're having, you're going to have a couple kids. Like, what do you want for them? Like, are they going to get in the same industry you're in? They're going to do this. They're going to do that. He says to me this, he says, Nick, you know, I'm going to be so happy um, if my kids can just do one thing and it's going to make me the happiest in the world. I will have succeeded as a father if my kids know how to set goals and achieve them. And I think a lot of people yeah. say that they maybe have a goal, a desire, a vision, but they never get detailed and intricate about what it truly is. And so for me, I went home and I wrote down exactly what I wanted, exactly what I wanted to achieve and what it looked like a year from now, two years from now. And I wrote it down each and every single day. And I think there's a power to that because mm. if I'm writing something down each and every single day, I come to the office, I get in at seven o'clock back then and, um, I wrote down, you know, I'm so happy and grateful now that 
X, Y, and Z has happened. Yeah. So happy and grateful now that I'm earning X, Y, and Z. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm driving X, Y, and Z. I'm happy and grateful that I'm living in X, Y, and Z. Yeah. It got deeply rooted into my mind. And I felt like my mind uh, was, you know, naturally, my, my mind was telling my body to do things to get me those, to get me what I truly yeah. wanted. Yeah. Um, and so I remember, um, and I, I tell people all the time, it's like, it's like a, if I'm wanting uh, to lose, let's just say I want to lose 10 pounds. And I'm saying I'm so happy and grateful now <laughs> yeah. that I, I weigh this amount. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I'm saying it and writing it each and every single day, yeah. well, my <laughs> brain is going to naturally tell my body. Right. Go to the gym <laughs> yeah. and naturally tell my, my brain, tell my, don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I'm saying, if I want to live in this particular place, right. my brain's going to naturally tell my body, well, you better wake up a little bit earlier. Yeah. You better, you know, do, you know, you better invest into, it's just going to naturally put my body in motion to do, to get the things that I want. And so I believe that you got to just figure out what it is you truly, truly want. You got the short-term goal, you have the long-term goals yeah. and, and write them down and become, you know, somewhat obsessive because it's something great to be obsessed about because it's different for everyone, yeah. right? One guy wants to live in Beverly Hills or one guy wants to travel the world or one guy wants to, you know, have, you know, kids and settle down. And one guy wants to go build, ho you know, houses and churches and ma it doesn't matter yeah. because you need that fuel to take you, um, you know, to get you through, you know, you know, um, to get you to that, you know, to get you that true fulfillment, you need the fuel. And then number two is you need something to fuel you when you go through the trials and tribulations. Because there will be trials and yeah. there will be tribulations um, in whatever industry or whatever endeavor you you know you're you're traveling through. Yeah. You need something. If you don't have it, it's gonna be very challenging. So how do you figure out what you want? Fulfillment. Like what's gonna make me feel happy? Happy. You know, one of the goals uh, that I set for myself is is the coaching and mentorship goal. Because for me, right. I'm happy when I teach people or into other people, or into other people, and then most importantly, I get them the results that they want to achieve. And so when I see, you know, some of my students, they're like, you know, they went from working at T-Mobile, you know, nothing wrong with T-Mobile. They went from working right, at T-Mobile right. to now they're like at the Beverly Hills Hotel at brunch with their, you know, yeah. posting their real yeah, estate checks. Cool. I'm like, that makes me feel happy. Yeah. So one of the goals I set for 2020. Two, yeah. crazy I'm saying that, is just to really um, get the coaching and consulting business to that next level and be able to reach and talk to and help more people. Yeah. The fulfillment, I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, Love it. Okay, so let's say, um, let's say there's someone out there and they're like, listen to this, they're going, you know, I, I don't really know what I, what I want. You know, they're like, yeah, like money's cool and, you know, or like I want to be successful and it's kind of broad. Like, how do you think someone narrows that down to figure out like what you actually want? Is it seeing it? Is it um, like, do, do you brainstorm on it? Uh, how do you get clearer on that? And I think that some people, I think it, uh, one of the things that I've noticed when it comes to this is like over analysis <laughs> leads to paralysis. We've For said sure. that over and over again because, you know, there's these things called short term goals. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's figuring out, you know, what you want to achieve in the next 30, 60, 90 days. It could be so small and so intricate, but it's a win and it gets you on the right you know, direction. So I think sometimes people, they, start, they make these big, huge goals. Yeah. Hey, I want to live, you know, or I want to do this. And it's like, well, there's like- You got to break it down. You got to break it down. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's just breaking it down into micro actions that is going to get you to that long-term goal. Because your chances are you're not going to go from zero to 10 million yeah. in one year, right? But you can go from zero to half a million, right. possibly a million, depending on what you're doing, in one year. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so instead of breaking down in intricate detail, how am I going to go from zero to 10 million? Let me break down in intricate detail how I go from zero to 500,000, right? Because, it's, because that's manageable. The brain can comprehend that. And, and it's really setting yourself up to win. I yeah. say you can't go from zero to 10. Some people have done it, but it's just the, the likelihood is just very low. So for me, it's just like breaking down what do I want to achieve in micro actions. And if those, if, if, if I can get done, you know, if I can get through those actions, I know it's just closer. And now, now from here to there is really manageable and really right. doable. But I think it just comes down to figuring out what it is you want short term. And then you're always going to have the long term, but let's focus on the short term. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Someone once told me it's like if you set a goal that's so large that you can't even fathom it, your brain's not going to do the actions that you necessarily need to take to get there because your brain's kind of like, eh, like, you know, you can't really do that. But if you put it as like a stretch goal, not as so like 10 years away goal, a stretch goal, your mind goes, yeah, that's 
that's possible, that's achievable, and then you start to take the actions that follow. Yeah. And, and so why, why do you think, because you could set goals, and obviously we're around the new year as well, so a lot of people are setting goals. So why do you think so many people set goals? And unfortunately, I mean, it's probably like 90% don't take the action. Like, why do, why do so many people not act on a vision that they, you know, because it's easy to go, man, I want to create this life. I want to have this house. I want to live here. I want to do this. But then it's like, like you said, the trials, the tribulations, those come. So why do you think so many people get stuck in, in action? I think it's, I think it's, number one is just fear. And I think that we all have that fear of failure. What's your relationship with fear? Um, I think that it's, it's there, yeah. but I think that when we are in the industry that we're in, the entrepreneurial sales industry, I think that we can control our own fate. Uh, and that's why I, I chose to uh, not, uh, you know, I were chose to work for myself. I've been, I've been self-employed and a business owner full-time since 2013, since I graduated college. Yeah. So since 2013 and now we're in 2020, I've never worked for anybody but myself. Yeah. And, you know, and so for me, I like to control my own fate. Yeah. And I felt that, um, you know, working for somebody else, I didn't have that control. For sure. Uh, I think a lot of people got a taste of that in the pandemic. So I think number one, it's the fear. Um, and then number two, I think it's those trials and those tribulations. And you have to understand that as you're going along this journey, the trials and the tribulations, my friend, will come. It's <laughs> inevitable. It's going to happen, whether it's something tiny yeah. or something huge and your whole business or your whole life or your whole, you know, family, something, ha something is going to happen. Right. And I think that that's when, um, that that's when you have to look at, take a look in the mirror and then you have to decide and only you can decide, mm. um, which direction you're going to go in. And, and that has happened so many times in business to me. Um, and every single time I said, let's take a look in the mirror. And I say, look, let's push, let's push, let's push and let's push. So I yeah. think, um, it's the fear and then just those, it's those, un, it's those trials and those tribulations, which some people don't expect them to have, but they're going to happen. And it's just part of life and part of business. Right. And so the key when it happens then is, I think a little nugget anybody can take here is like if a trial tribulations comes to you, almost having that like incantation or that self-talk of like push, 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 like keep going, like push through it. If you push through it, you're going to get to their side and it's going to be even better. Yeah. And a mentor told me this, and some people might not know under, or understand this terminology or what I'm getting <laughs> ready to say, but a mentor told me this, I think, man, five, six years ago, and it completely changed the way I thought about these trials and tribulations. Huh. He says, Nick, you have to care, but you can't care that much. <laughs> and it's the most strangest thing because most people are like, the, the stock just fell. I lost, I lost it all. Oh, my God. I'm going to... Right. It's like, what are you talking about? We just, the house, we're going to lose tens and thousands, whatever. Yeah. Right. Most people freak out. Right. So when those things happen and, and I'm, I'm hoping that they're not just going to be like life or death type situations, but I go, okay. Cool. I care. Like we got to fix the challenge. Right. right. I don't call them problems, by the way. I never call problems problems. I call them challenges. Hmm. Problems. I think for me, it's just such like, a, I don't want to say it's a negative word, but I just don't relate to that particular where I call it a challenge because I believe challenges you can overcome challenges right. problems totally. they just stick they just stick it like turns your brain off yeah almost. it's like a bad haircut it's just ugly right it's <laughs> yeah. like it's like terrible or like your thick tooth is chipped because you fell and it's like yeah. walking around with no tooth right it's ugly <laughs> um so I I call I go I tell all my you know employees or business partners I say hey we have a challenge or even in my relationships my personal relationships yeah. my business relationships my you know whatever it is I say well, can we have a small challenge? Or here, okay, I go, here's the challenge. I'm not gonna go, oh, here's the problem. Oh my God, we're gonna, yeah. we gotta fight. I go, we have a challenge. Yeah. So changing up the vocabulary, I think is key. Powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Cause it's the self-talk is just like, a, I mean, you, you get into this negative self-talk, it will yeah. take you down where you don't want to be. But, but and, and, and I hope people get what I'm trying to say here. But for me, when something happens in business, I care. I care, Yeah. but I don't care that much. Yeah. Because I know that if I start to freak out, it's just going to go down a path where I don't need to go down. Right. And I think that even goes to the next subject, which is like limited association and the disassociation with just negative people, circumstances and situations and environments, which is key to getting after where you want. You're building a business and you're, you know, you're ex this person and this person is just throwing all this negativity. Well, I can't like disassociate from mom, but there's something called limited association with mom or 
disassociation from particular conversations. So for mm. example, if mom or girlfriend or boyfriend or dog is going to talk <laughs> bad about your business, I'm not going to engage back about that business. I'm yeah. just going to change the subject. Right. I'm going to eliminate, you know, I'm not going to engage in that conversation because I know where it's going to end up. Yeah. So if there's someone talking negative about a business, about you, about a, your, the way you look, whatever it is, you just change the subject or yeah, you walk sort of. away because you know where it's going to go. So I think a lot of people, limited association, limit your association with particular individuals and then disassociation, completely cutting, cutting that association off with individuals and disassociation from particular conversations, which is going to derail you because yeah. you know where it's already. I said, someone talks to me about, you know, and, and says something that, you know, like a negative comment or a negative, I don't know, whatever it is, rarely happens, but I go, yeah. I, I don't engage back. I go, yeah. I know that's, I don't, I got to drain my energy. Right, totally. No way. Yeah. So I think that that's key and I hope some people really understand that. Powerful. Um, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. It's, it's, uh, unfortunately for, I think a lot of people, it's easy to get caught up in the drama and there's this conversation about bad thing and it's like, oh, it's exciting, whatever, but it's like, that's not going to get you closer to a life that, that excites you and lights you up. And I think one of the other powerful things you said too, is it's like, what are the conversations you're having with yourself? What is the language you're using with yourself? Because if you can just change up, like really what the, the conversations you're having with yourself are doing is they're dictating your focus, right? If you have a conversation that says, I have a problem versus a challenge, a challenge you goes, okay, my focus is, this is going to be like a lighter word. Isn't that like a lighter yeah. word? It's like, oh, we have a challenge. It's yeah. like, oh, but if I, Stu, we have this problem, this mass. It's like, right. Like the problem is like, wow, it's just such a challenge. Is like a, such a lighter word. Yeah. Right? And it's like problem. Your focus goes, oh, problem like crap. Like when there's a problem, like that's really bad. This is going to be really difficult. This is, we may not be able to fix this because it's a problem versus challenge. Like it changes your focus. And when you change your focus, you change your actions, you change your actions, you change your results. So it's like the power of the conversations you have with yourself are huge. And so I'm curious for you, um, obviously you're, crushing it now, you know, doing very successful, crushing real estate, mentoring people, helping a lot of people. For you, what is your drive? What keeps you with the foot on the gas at 100 miles an hour? I think at this point, uh, and having been in the real estate business now for six years, yeah. prior to that, the, the sales business, the network marketing business, for we were doing that for four or five years. Right. And, just, and, and being a part, being like, you know, that, you know, that full-time entrepreneur since 2013, I think for me personally, and every I think everyone is a little bit different. Totally. It's just yeah. the the what that drive is just the I guess you can call it fear of not uh, getting all I can out of the limited time that we're here, hmm. and not amounting to my fullest potential. Yeah, uh, I think that for me is like the never ending drive uh, is just knowing that we all have gifts and talents and abilities and skills. And there's probably a lot of people that are watching right now and they're saying, hey, man, I have this gift and this, this talent and this skill. And no one knows about it. No one knows about it. And so for me, mm. it's like, hey, you know, we're, if we all have these skills and talents and abilities, you know, it's like, it's like almost like a, it's like, a, it's like a mechanism that goes off in our brain. Like, you've got to get the most you can because we're yeah. just, the time that we have here is so limited. So for me, and then obviously, you know, we all want to live a good life. Yeah. You know, I've been able to travel the world. Built now uh, one multi-million dollar real estate company. Now the second one, you know, that's probably three or four months old. We'll hit that million mark here in like a month or two, yeah. uh, shortly, and been able to, you know, just do create, you know, six or seven other businesses. And so I think that life is about um, fun, you know. Yeah. And if people follow me on, on <laughs> yeah, you on have social, a good time. It's like there's like a business side, and then there's like a fun side, yeah. and there's a balance between. But life is short. Life is short, and um, you can't take the money with you you can leave it you know for your kids right, right? you can leave you you know stocks and you can leave real estate and you can leave cash but you can't take it with you yeah you know so i think that there's a balance to that and just really enjoying the time that we have and for me i'm all about uh relationships and experiences mm. and so i want to have just incredible relationships friends and family yeah uh, and then you know i want to be able to you know treat people that i love and care about and travel and hang out and go yeah. party, whatever, yeah, just, yeah. you know, do what Live we want to do. Life. And then lastly, time freedom. Yeah. Time freedom. I think that is the most, um, probably the best part about it. 
just you know we used to joke back in the day and we had this saying it's like what was it it was like wake up when you're done sleeping yeah. six saturdays one, one sunday, sunday type of lifestyle yeah, yeah. Uh, do what you want whatever you want whomever you want anytime you want it's very arrogant ego to, right. like, to kind of say it now but there's a small truth to that yeah there's a there's a truth to what we used to say for sure and we were like programmed to say it and i feel like you know both of us you know both we live that today yeah. and i think that that is um is what really keeps me going for sure yeah so one thing that's interesting is i hear you say that is like one thing that i believe in life and have seen from working with people is it's like we have experiences in our life and we have them often enough that eventually that belief becomes or that experience becomes a story and a narrative and then that story and narrative becomes a belief of the way that we look at life right it becomes our lens and so i'm curious like when you were saying that you fear more that you're not going to get your, your, your full potential out. And I think one thing that I just need to emphasize that I think so many people need to hear that you touched on and you said it quickly, but it's like so many people probably listen to this have gifts that people don't even know about. It's scary. Like you got a gift, you have something that is like your thing that you're supposed to share with the world and nobody knows about it. And it's like, I just hope that hits someone in the heart that it's like, you gotta, you gotta drive into that. And so ultimately what I'm curious is like, where did this belief come from for you of having a bigger fear of not getting everything out of, you know, one day being on your deathbed and going, man, I, I could have done so much more with my life. Like where, where does that come from? Like, when did you get that belief? I think, um, it's like this, it's like everything I don't, in my life up to this point, and I think a lot of people can probably relate, and, I, and I, I'm not going to say this on my death, but I'm not going to regret the things. I, do not want to, I, I don't regret the things that I did, that I pulled the trigger on. Yeah. Never have. You know, you want to go, you know, obviously there's calculated risk, right? So I'm totally. not telling anybody to go, you know, overextend <laughs> yeah. and over, you know, and yeah, put yourself yeah, yeah. in a financial bind or some type of situation, but I don't regret the things that I did. And I don't regret the things that I purchased. I don't regret the, the things... <laughs> You know, or, yeah. or I traveled or, you know, how much I spent or, you know, this opening this. I don't regret the things that I did. Uh, I, and I don't ever want to get to that point. I, I, you know, I, I don't regret the things I did, yeah. you know. If anything, I regret the things that I didn't do. Right. And um, I think that that is like that driving factor because when there's a, there's a, uh, when there's a choice to make, hey, you know, you know our, our company spends, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 in marketing a month. Right. And there's an ROI yeah. on that. Yeah. But I don't, you know, ever regret saying, hey, we're going to go all in this particular month. Right. And we're going to, you know, I don't. I don't. And when I make that decision to, you know, whether it's the marketing or whether it's to purchase this or whether it's to do that or whether it's to travel there, you know, I go all in. Yeah. I go all in. You're going to spend X amount on marketing. Well, you better make sure that you're at the office early. You better make sure your right. employees are on point. You better make sure that all the systems and processes and procedures and everything's on point because that 30,000 or 20,000 spent on marketing should equate to, you know, right. you know, 150 or 200,000 in revenue yeah. for that particular month. Yeah. So, um, I, I'll tell you what, I, I just don't regret anything that I did. Yeah. I, I think that that for me is like, you know, makes me want to take yeah. a little bit more risk. It's, it's powerful too. It's like at, at the end of your life, you're not going to regret the things you did. You're going to regret the things you didn't do, the risks you didn't take, the thing that scared the shit out of you that you never built up the courage enough to do. And looking at life through that lens, uh, it, it'll change your life. And, and the last, and the, the, I mean, to add to that is look at 2020. Just look at the year of 2020. Yeah. And everyone who's anyone who's watching this or sitting here can, can relate a little bit to what I'm getting ready to say. Look at the chaos. Look at the destruction. Look at the fear. Look at the anxiety. Look at what took place in 2000. No one, right? I guess there's, you know, could have predicted it, what was going to happen in yeah. 2020. And there were people that lost their lives. There's people that lose their lives every single day, whether it's a car accident, whether it's, you know, just a disease, whether it's just whatever it totally. is. Right. And you just never know. You yeah. never know. Um, you know, for me, I say it's, you know, God's timing. Right. Yeah. But you just never know. So you got to attempt to live life as if today could possibly be that last day, that last breath. And I pray for anybody who's watching for us here. It's not, we have many, many, right. many, many, many years to come, which sure. I truly believe and pray that we, we will, but you just never know. And I, and I use Kobe, Kobe Bryant as a prime example, a prime example, one of the best players to ever play the game. 
and now he's the you know and yeah. now he's remembered once a year yeah once a year Crazy. he's remembered once a year because he's no longer here so uh you know for me i just i you know we have to look at that and look at back at and i think that 2020 was like a prime example of just no one predicted it no one knew and i knew people i knew you know a handful that just you know if that just that aren't <clears throat> that aren't here anymore yeah they're not here anymore you know and they never would have predicted it predicted it, it just you yeah, know it happens life so happens live in life as as if it could possibly be that last day yeah. and, have, and having fun too anyone's watching we have fun so <laughs> yeah. we have a lot of fun so yeah. have fun as well it's also like i think you know one other powerful lesson from COVID too is it's like sometimes we go through our life and we say you know i want to take the safe route or i do this thing like um who was it there was uh jim carrey said like a lot of people choose practicality disguised as fear and they go throughout their life choosing the, f the safe path because wow. it's safe wow but it's really just fear talking and you're saying well it's the practical the safe thing and i think one of the most powerful lessons that covid gave so many people is it's like there's no safe path so many people went through a year of their life, five years, 10 years, some people 20, 30, 40 years said, I'm going to take the safe path. It's going to put food on the table for my family. And something like COVID happened. And all of a sudden it's like, there, there's no safe path. It's like, another thing he says is like, if you could fail at the thing you don't love, you might as well take a shot at doing the thing that you do love. Cause you never know what's going to happen. You never know how long you're going to be here. Um, and you know, like we said earlier, sometimes you just got to take your shot. So shoot that, shoot that shot, shoot, shoot that, that shot. shot. You know, um, I th I'm and I'm probably just I'll, be, I'll say it to him blue in the face. I'm so grateful for that for the for the risk that I took. Yeah. Uh, because like they say, no risk, no reward. <laughs> yeah. You know. So if you're you know watching this thing and you're on the fence about you know something right, whether it's a new industry, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new profession, whether right. you're transitioning, uh, muster up that muster up that courage. Because your life can look so different, mm. so different For real. a year from now. A year from now, your life can look so different. I tell my students this all the time. They say, hey, I don't like my job. I'm not earning enough. I don't I have kids. I'm doing this. I say, look, you could just focus in, right? Six months to a year, your life can look so different. Yeah. So, 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 so different uh, a year from now, two years from now. Because a year, a year ago, two years ago, my life looked completely different yeah. than it does today. And I remember early on in my real estate business, I remember leaving the office just just so everyone we're not rainbows and butterflies here. I want to really share with yeah. you guys the the real deal. I remember leaving my office early on, and my office was the size of a closet. By the way, yeah, it was the size of a closet. But leaving the office feeling defeated, um, didn't have like very many deals. This the business was just like man. We were like, you know, yeah, the boat was like shaking, rocking. Yeah, yeah, it was rocking. And I remember, you know. Uh, I had a, always a long drive home. It was like a 40 minute drive home traffic. I'm sitting there. I'm like, uh, but I never quit. Yeah. Never quit. Never, ever, ever, ever quit. Yeah. Love um, it. and there was a lot of trials and tribulations. And then, and then when you get to face those trials and tribulations in the beginning, it sucks. You may not have the money. Okay. Let's just fix this challenge. Boom. Yeah. Throw some money at it or yeah. whatever. Now it's like, we're kind of like, all right, we'll just fix, you know, yeah. but in the beginning it's like, now I got like, you know, we're, yeah, you're, you're just starting shit. out. Yeah. yeah. So it's even tougher. Yeah. You know, and as you grow, you know, I think sometimes your challenges grow too. My my challenges now are like bigger. Yeah, it's like, like you're deciding like, hey, should we go? I don't like commercial flights. I'm like, hey, should we? You guys <laughs> yeah, are looking yeah, at yeah. private. Like, you know, it's like I don't like sitting there and yeah. this and that. And it's like it's just different challenges, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and and I think that that's all part of life. Okay. Yeah. Well, Nick, my man, it's been an absolute honor to have you here. Always a good time. I'm curious if people, you know, they're watching this, listen to this. However. And they're going, I, I need some more Nick Levano in my life. Uh, what's the best way for them to find you, see what you're up to? Uh, social media, probably the best, right? Cool. At Flip King on Instagram, uh, Nicholas Levano Facebook, yeah. uh, Nicholas or Nick Levano YouTube, and then nicklevano.com, N I C K L U E V A N O.com. So nicklevano.com. The best is probably going to be Instagram, oh, good clip. Uh, at Flip King. And um, if there's anybody out there that, um, Man, if you're going through it, yeah. keep pushing, keep fighting, keep moving, keep shaking, and use you know podcasts like this. Like what he's put together is incredible to help fuel you 
put this on in your car, listen it, listen to it while you're driving to work, while you're driving, you know, doing Uber or Postmates or yeah. you're, you know, on the way to a gig or you're on the way to an interview or, or while you're on the way to whatever it is you're looking to do or, or you're on the way home 40 minutes because podcasts like this, information like this can change situations in a heartbeat. Yeah. So shout out to Stu again for putting this thing together and this thing is taking off more than ever. So Love shout out to man. you. Last, last question I have, we're going to keep it 15 seconds. Uh, the podcast is called Finding Direction. It's all about helping people find direction, but through action. So what is one thing someone listening to this can do in the next 24 to 48 hours to start finding direction? Find a mentor. Find an industry, right? Whatever industry, uh, you know, you truly, uh, whether it's the real estate or e-commerce or it's, you know, whatever it is, find an industry. It's going to get you what you want and then find a mentor. Find somebody who's um, credible, who's knowledgeable, yeah. who knows what they're doing, and then last but not least, this is the most important, by the way. So, so, so tune it up, t t turn it up real quick. Work your ass off mm. because you can find the industry. You can, you know, find the mentor. You can get the guidance. But if you don't work, 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 yeah. work, 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 ain't nothing going to happen. Work your ass off. The most important. Let's go. My man, it's been an honor. Appreciate you, brother. Talk to you guys soon.